it's time for a major project. So we are doing all of the floors upstairs. So I'm installing these solo, of course. Today we are gonna demo and clear out the upstairs and prep everything. The floors are supposed to get delivered tomorrow, so then I'll show you how to put floors in. Okay, the first step is to remove the trim. You just score the caulk line so it comes off easier. You wanna do this carefully if you're planning to reuse your trim. The tool I'm using is called a trim pull and I will link it. I'm replacing the baseboard so I'm just ripping it all off. Okay guys, the room is finally empty and now it's time to rip out carpet, which sounds easy, but it's gonna be super heavy, I'm sure. I'm gonna cut it up into like smaller chunks and see if we can make it easier. Uh, let's see how fast we can do this. Ready, go. So far, so good. I cut the carpet into tiny chunks so I could get it out all by myself. And now I just have to figure out how to haul it away. Now I'm removing the little tack strips along the edge of the wall. They're just hammered in, so you have to wedge them out and try not to poke your fingers. <laughs> I'm only a little dead. We got all of the little tack boards from the outside. I need knee pads in the worst way, so we're gonna grab those from Home Depot. I'm also gonna get a floor cutter because I'm not walking up and down the stairs a million times to cut them. And we also need to level out these floors. If you notice right here, and it is very uneven, I will show you just how bad it is. But what you need to do is get um, kind of a concrete that you can smooth on. It'll look like this. Now we can start laying floors. Okay, so I had to scrape the floor where all this glue is because all the carpet pad was glued down. So that was really intense and zero fun. But now I'm gonna use my planer and I'm gonna go along this ridge right here because it's kind of like bowed up and we'll take off kind of like a layer, flatten it a little bit and then use the feather finish because this is like way more than a fourth an inch. So I think we have to take it down with the planer first. <laughs> So we swept this like a hundred times, that was about 0% fun, and now it's time to fill in the holes. We need to find areas that are uneven that we can fill in with this. So for example, over here, it's chipped up, but the prep is so important. It literally will make your floors last longer and not break if you prep correctly. So they're super boring steps, but it's so worth it. Okay, this is what I'm mixing up for the floor. This feather finish, you don't have to prime or anything. We have water, a mask, a bucket, and a mixer. Now we're taking it upstairs to fill in all the holes. You need a scraper or trowel and your mixed up feather finish. Now we're gonna let it dry and we'll come back and do the floors once it's ready. Uh, we have a little bit of a situation. I was headed to Goodwill clearly, but the floors are getting delivered like right now and it's gonna rain in like 30 minutes. So I have to rush home and carry 3,300 pounds of flooring in by myself. In fact, when you get flooring delivered, they have to put it in the street because it can't make it over this little lip because it's 3,800 pounds and we have to carry it all.
All the floors are in, and we only sustained one minor injury. I'm gonna go drink some water. Okay, it's time to do the floors. Using these rigid core vinyl floors from Audacity, it's the linen color, and look how gorgeous. So these floors actually have underlayment attached. Anyone that tells you installing floors is easy is a liar. This is very intense. I had a moment where I almost broke down and hired someone, but here's the situation. These floors are floating, which means they're not attached to the actual floor in any way. Every time you put a new board in and bang it in, the whole thing moves. But I finally figured out a system where we stack a bunch of weight on it. So as we work our way this way, the boards are like staying in place down there because it was literally like chasing butter noodles around a plate. So here's how this goes. We take this edge and we put it into this little groove, lay it down, and then we bang on this to get this to go together with a mallet, like this. I don't wanna jinx it, but I think today is the last day. We have to finish up the flooring. I'm gonna show you how to cut floors. There's many, many ways. And the biggest lesson we've learned so far is that it is possible to install floors by yourself, but I definitely recommend tricking someone into helping you. Cutting floors. So you're supposed to be able to like score these with a box knife and snap them, but I have not had much luck getting even edges. So I got this floor cutter off Amazon and all you do is this. It's so easy. Here's how the floors are looking. So we have all these curved cuts to make. So the easiest way to do curved cuts is with this thing. It's a contour gauge. You just stick it up against the curve and then you can map it onto the floors, cut them out with a jigsaw. Ways to cut flooring. By far the easiest, but they're expensive. This is free and works pretty good. This is essential if you want to skip the table saw. You're going to need to use a jigsaw if you have any cutouts. Or for me, I had circular cuts around the stairs.